The time is now for the Dr. Bob Sports Podcast. I am Tanner. I am our head of analytics. And for the past seven years, I've been working alongside Bob, originating our NFL and college basketball bets. And today, as always, I'm joined by our digital media specialist, Grant. Let's get right into it because we've got a lot to talk about in terms of playoff seeding motivation for week 18. Yes, we do. So our first segment is we will be grading these script writers on how they did for the schedule of the last week of the season. And we've got two great primetime games. We've got the Texans Colts game. It's a de facto play in matchup, but the loser eliminated and the winner gets into the postseason. And we also have that bills versus dolphins game. Winner takes the AFC East in the two seed while Buffalo could miss the playoffs entirely with a loss, depending on the results earlier in the day. So what are the other games you have circled for playoff seeding this week? Well, we've got five, maybe six, seven that we that look a little bit wonky right now in terms of the betting lines at first. And you'll definitely need to take these into account when you're creating your DFF, DFS lineups uh, with backups galore across the league. So let's start with that first game on Saturday afternoon. The Ravens are locked into the top seed in the AFC. They've got nothing to play for as they can't move down in the standings. So there's going to be a ton of backups for Baltimore, while the Steelers are going to be a full go because they're not uh, completely eliminated for the playoffs. And then we've got the 49ers. They've clinched a bye and home field advantage, just like the Ravens. So they're, um, they're resting Purdy, but there's other, like, they might let the other starters go. Uh, Kyle Shanahan's dad, Mike Shanahan, said that they lost a Super Bowl because they rested guys in the last week of the regular season. Then they had the bye. So the two weeks off, he blames mm-hmm. for, um, not winning another Super Bowl in his career. So we'll see how the Niners play that. They're still favored against the Rams, um, even though Purdy is out. Next one is the uh, the Browns locked into the five seed. So they're going to rest starters. And you see Cincinnati out to a huge favorite there. Now, here's another kind of murky situation. Detroit is the three seed. They can move up to the two seed with the win and losses from the Cowboys and Eagles. Um, and Dan Campbell's, you know, he's the kind of guy that is just going to play his guys. but. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be wanting to put money on the Lions to cover this week just because, you know, there's really a very, you know, there's less than 5% chance that they get the two seed. And so mm-hmm. probably be wise for them to rest starters at some point in this game. And, I, you know, your guess is as good as mine on when they do that. And the, the other one that I wanted to bring up the, is the, uh, the Kansas City is locked into the three seeds. So they're going to sit important starters as well against the Chargers. Yeah, and that last maybe game you're referring to is the Eagles, and it seems like they don't really have a lot to play for here. Yeah, there's a possibility Philadelphia starters also sit in this game because Dallas is just unlikely to lose to the commanders. And Nick Sirianni Mm -hmm. said, we're going to do whatever we need to do to win this game, but resting starters is a consideration. Um, And so I, I, I take that to mean, you know, if Dallas is up, two scores at halftime, maybe Philadelphia looks and says, all right, you know, we'll just, we don't want another Devonta Smith. You know, he's already laboring and and we don't want any other starters to be hurt for the playoffs. So maybe we rest guys in the second half. And I think the market is pricing that in slightly right now, but not fully. Um, And so, you know, if you're looking to bet the Eagles this week, it's probably just a first half bet. And if you're looking to bet the Giants, Mm -hmm. if you like the Giants side, I do the full game. And the last thing I wanted to mention, um, the news that came in right as we were about to record this podcast is that uh, Washington, uh, their beat reporter, JP Finley, is, is getting the vibe that a lot of their veterans could be rested for week 18. Now, obviously they're completely eliminated. And so I guess all the guys that are just nursing injuries and been gutting through it, uh, those guys might rest as well. So the commanders might be sitting guys against a Dallas Cowboys team that needs the game for the division. All right. Well, that'll be a good one to watch out for, but let's shift it over to our next segment. We've got our free bet of the week and we released a strong opinion on over 40 and you can play it to 40 and a half on the Jacksonville versus Tennessee game. Yeah, so the Jaguars need to clinch the AFC South. They'll be eliminated for postseason contention with a loss, and the urgency of that means that I expect to see a full go from Trevor Lawrence and an outside chance that they get back wide receiver Christian Kirk, who is sixth in yards per route run in the slot this season. He's been out since week 14. Yeah, and it sounds like the Jags are kind of getting fe- or finally getting healthy here, especially with the offensive line. I mean, they just got their best offensive lineman back. Yeah, left tackle Cam Robinson suited up last week after missing a month, and Jacksonville's offensive line ranks second 
in pass blocking efficiency in the seven weeks that Robinson has gotten more than 15 snaps. So basically the games that he's been out there, they've been an elite offensive line. And I expect Lawrence to be kept clean this week as Titans as the Titans will be without their best pass rusher. Jeffrey Simmons continues to be out and he ranks ninth in pass rushing efficiency among interior defenders. And, you know, with Lawrence, if he's able to sit back there with time to hit Ridley and also, I mean, the Titans are 28th in EPA per target allowed to tight ends. And so we know Evan Ingram has had a great season, seventh in success rate among tight ends. So I think he'll be able to sit back there and distribute um, in his first game back from injury. All right, well, let's shift it over to Tennessee's offense. How do you think they're going to be able to move the ball this week? Well, I mean, the Titans offense has been a disappointment this year. There's, there's no doubt about that. They're 27th in yards per play, but they can thrive if the opposing defense can't stop the run and plays zone coverage. And the Jaguars check both of those boxes. So the Titans have the fifth highest run play rate adjusted for situation in the NFL. You know, this has always been a run first team under Vrabel with Derrick Henry. Um, and the Jaguars' rush defense ranks 27th by our numbers. The other thing is the Titans are averaging 42% more yards per attempt against zone coverage than man this year. That's second largest gap in the league. It's a huge gap. I mean, the Titans have not been able to separate at all against man coverage, but they won't have to worry about that as the Jaguars have the fourth highest zone coverage rate in the league. So our model makes this total 44.2, and I certainly think this game should be priced on the other side of the key number of 41. All right. I like that. Well, let's shift it over to stock up, stock down. And last week, you went and bought the stock of Devontae Adams, who got 21 targets. I mean, insane. That was the most since 2015. But whose stock are you buying this week? Okay, this week, I'm going to be buying Falcons tight ends stock. So the Saints starting safety Marcus May is likely out again. And backup safety Jonathan Abram is terrible in coverage. He w the Raiders cut him. And the Saints had to pick him up because May went out. And uh, Atlanta's tight ends, Kyle Pitts and John o. Smith, are quietly having pretty solid seasons. Smith is eighth in yards per route run. And Pitts is 10th in EPA per target. And I think that whoever is under center for Atlanta, it still hasn't been announced yet, whether it will be Heineke or Ritter, will have pretty solid protection because we know the Saints get most of their pass rush from the edge defenders. Kyle Granderson, Tanoa uh, Passignon, and Cameron Jordan have combined for 58% of New Orleans pressures this season. But the Falcons' tackles are really solid. Right tackle Caleb McGarry and left tackle Jake Matthews rank 7th and 14th respectively in pass blocking efficiency. So I think they're going to shut down the Saints edge rushers in this game and allow whoever is under center for Atlanta to distribute to those dangerous tight ends against a backup safety. All right. Well, whose stock are you going to be selling this week? All right. Here we go. I'm ready to have the conversation. I am selling the Bears fans chanting they want Justin Fields. So. I get it. You know, everyone's getting excited in Chicago after their 5-2 and two since Week 10, but it has not been because of the offense. Chicago's offense is 28th in success rate during that stretch. It's because of the defense. They are allowing a league low 37.6% success rate. Fields is not the reason for the turnaround. I get it. Everyone wants to see winning football, but Fields has not shown to be a winning quarterback. He is uh, averaging negative 0.01 EPA per play this season. That's 22nd. He's a middling quarterback and paying him, you know, you, you pick up his fifth year option, but then if you extend it into a contract into that 35 to $45 million range is going to cripple this franchise. Just ask the giants if they want a redo of that Daniels Jones contract. Yeah. I mean, so do you think Caleb Williams or Drake may are better than Justin Fields? Well, not necessarily. But I don't think that they're $25 million worse than Field. That's a ton of cap. I mean, the Dolphins yeah. got Tyreek for that kind of money. So uh, you look at it, you're just like, it, it's not just um, just a comparison between what this number one overall pick would be against what Fields would be next year. It's the difference in money spent. And, and Chicago's front office would raise their chances at winning a title by drafting their favorite quarterback at number one overall, whether that be Caleb or Drake May, and have him under cost control for the next five years. This roster is all, already solid. We said the defense is leading the league mm -hmm. in success rate over the last seven weeks, and they could make the playoffs right away in the first year, as we saw guys like Andrew Luck or Robert Griffin came in the league with you know a solid supporting cast around them and make the playoffs right away. So, I don't know. I think Fields is a starter in this league. But if I'm mm -hmm. the Bears front office, 
I trade him away, and and Fields might not fetch as much as fans might think. I mean, Fields, maybe a team only pays a second round pick for him, but you have the number one pick. You've got you know another top half of the draft pick of your own. Uh, you can really build something around give you know Caleb Williams or Drake May one of the best supporting casts a, a top rookie quarterback has ever come into the league with, and so I think that the Bears should let go of Fields. Yeah, I mean, that is a crazy turnaround from the Bears fans this year. I mean, it was, he's done. We don't want him to now they love him again. So I don't know. The overreactions are always way too much with the public. We all know this, but let's shift it over to our next segment. We've got the injury watch and the Eagles are going to be without Devontae Smith this week. Are you worried about that? Yeah, I mean, he is, he's 14th in success rate this year. It'll be a big loss, but maybe not as much in this particular matchup as it would be in other games. So the Giants defense runs the second highest amount of man coverage in the NFL. And Smith is not their man beater. A.J. Brown is Philadelphia's man beating wide receiver. So Brown is averaging 3.32 yards per outrun versus man this season, while Smith is averaging just 1.42 yards per outrun. And Brown will have a favorable matchup this week as he'll be lined up across from Adoree Jackson, who is 65th out of 67 qualifying cornerbacks in yards per cover snap allowed. So, I mean, if the Eagles don't rest Brown, he is going to go absolutely off in this matchup. Hertz is going to feed him. But if this, you know, Smith injury lingers into the playoffs, I am worried about it for Philadelphia's offense. All right. Well, looking at the Broncos, we see that they're getting Cortland Sutton back, but they also lost a lineman last week. He's probably going to be out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Stidham in his first start, just a 6.6 average depth of target, 6.6 yard average depth of target, but it will raise um, when they get Sutton back. He, he's one of the best deep threats in the NFL this year. He's, he's ninth in deep receptions. And so that will help Stidham, but I'm worried about him being able to distribute the ball down field to Sutton because uh, Mike McGlinchey is banged up and his backup Cam Fleming would struggle mightily across from Max Crosby, who's seventh in the NFL in sacks this year. McGlinchey himself, you know, is has been one of the worst right tackles in the NFL this year. So even if he is able to gut it out and suit up, he would struggle across from Max Crosby. So I'm not really optimistic about the protection for Stidham, although getting back Sutton does seem like it will be pretty mm -hmm. helpful for this offense. Yeah, and Sean Payton, he knows that he needs to show him off as much as he can. But let's right. look at this what. Let's look at this Washington defense. They're going to be missing one of their best remaining players. I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah, I mean, we we touched on this a little bit earlier in the podcast, but you know, the guys that are banged up for Washington, Jonathan Allen, interior defender, really solid. The the, the one that I think is almost certainly out will be um, cornerback uh, Kendall Fuller. So Fuller, he didn't play last week, so it just given the report. Earlier today, it doesn't seem like he's going to play this week. And backup cornerback Emmanuel Forbes is allowing 4.3 more yards per target than Fuller. Fuller has actually had a pretty solid season. It's surprising to say that anyone in the commander's secondary is having a solid season. But you look at it, and you're like, okay, well, I mean, if you lose Fuller, it's going to be an absolute disaster. And I actually don't think that that's going to benefit C.D. Lamb as much as it will benefit Brandon Cooks, who's fifth in EPA per target this year. And we already saw Dak absolutely shred Washington's defense on Thanksgiving. He averaged 10.3 yards per pass play. So <laughs> I don't know if it could get worse without um, Fuller in this game, but it's certainly not going to help him. No, it will not. But let's shift it over to our next segment. We've got our DraftKings player of the slate. And who do you have lined up for us this week? This week, I've got Greg Dorch at 4,600. So a pretty cheap wide receiver to get into your lineups on Sunday. And Arizona's offense has been firing on all cylinders with Kyler back. And they've been consistently underpriced in the market. They've, they've won outright as double-digit dogs now twice in Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia. The Cardinals had a 50 8.7% success rate last week. That's insane. That's one of the highest marks by an offense all season. Now, Hollywood Brown has been out, which means that Greg Dorch has been one of Kyler's top options. He has 12 targets the last two weeks, and I, I think he's you know way underpriced here on DraftKings at 4,600. I love that pick, Greg Dorch. I, what a guy. That's a great one. But let's shift it over to our next segment. We've got weather of the week, and it looks like we might finally be getting a true snow game. 
Yeah, so it'll be in New England where I'll be watching these games from hunkered down in this potential winter storm. It looks like that we're definitely going to be getting some sort of precipitation, but the temperature is going to make a big difference here because if it's 30, then we'll be seeing, you know, light, fluffy snowflakes. If it's 38, we might be seeing sleet. And that makes mm-hmm. uh, that's key when you're forecasting this game because if it's sleet instead of snow, that makes conditions for scoring very, very tough because you don't get the same slipping effect that defenders sometimes have in snow. If it's sleet, it's just wet ball and very difficult to move it at all because we're going to be seeing 10 to 20 mile per hour winds as well. So, I mean, this is the lowest total of the year, but I actually do think there could be value on the under if it's sleeting come Sunday morning. So you have to monitor the weather forecast. (laughs) That is insane. I mean, it might help both teams, though, to have their quarterbacks not touch the ball as much as possible. (laughs) Yeah, just run it, (laughs) run it, run it. You know, we've seen teams have you know, surprise offensive outburst in these snow games before. So I, you know, I'd be tempered if you're seeing actual snowflakes fall in New England on Sunday morning. I wouldn't be automatically, um, you know, hitting the under like maybe you'd see on Twitter some people recommending. But if it's just nasty, sleeting weather, I mean, that's almost poetic for Belichick's last game in New England. (laughs) He'll want to win this game three to zero. (laughs) <laughs> that would be incredible but let's shift it over to our prime time preview and we've got the bills versus dolphins and as we said earlier this game could have some wild outcomes as the winner will win the afc east and get the two seed but the bills could miss the playoffs completely with a loss here i think all of the afc teams are cheering for a bills loss because this defense has been looking insane recently Yeah, only 17.5 points per game since the bye week. And they certainly look like a top 10 defense heading heading into January. Maybe a top five defense. So the Bills just got back interior defender Daquan Jones, who was eighth in pressures before he went out early in week five. He just came back last game, and they played most of the season without him, and they're eighth in pressure rate without him. And and he'll be very dangerous uh, next to Ed Oliver, who ranks third in pass rushing efficiency. You could argue that the Bills have the best defensive tackle tandem in the NFL with Jones and Oliver. And then you look at Miami, they have no starters remaining on the interior offensive line and backup center Liam Eikenberg went out last Sunday. So it could be every time Tua drops back, he'll have to get it out extremely quickly because the pockets will be collapsing on him from the interior all day. Yeah, and Buffalo replaced Trey White with Rasul Douglas at cornerback. So linebacker Matt Milano is the only Bill starter on defense that's going to be sidelined with uh, Jones back now. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about all season, all, you know, injuries to the Bills defense. And now it's mostly everyone back because, like you said, they replaced Trey White with Rasul Douglas, who's been great. Now, not to undersell the loss of Milano. He is a big Loss. In fact, they are surrendering a 52% pass success rate to running backs this season, 31st in the NFL, mostly due to not having Milano patrolling the screen games and Texas routes to running backs. And that's going to be huge for Miami as they're targeting running backs, the sixth most in the NFL. And I think that Tua is going to need the screen game humming to slow that Bill's interior pass rush that we talked about. Yeah, and Miami's two star receivers have been battling ankle injuries the last few weeks. Are you worried about these guys for this matchup and going into the playoffs? Well, I I'm thinking that Waddle is going to be out. He might, you know, try and gut it out and, and play through, but mm-hmm. I just don't know how you can be effective on a high ankle sprain. So even if he's active, I wouldn't worry too much about Waddle. And, and the Bills have showed that they have an ability to slow down Tyreek as well. He had a season low three receptions in the first game against Buffalo's defense. And Hill leads the NFL with 20 receptions on passes with 20 plus air yards. He's, you know, a deep threat as we all know, but he had none of those in week four against the bills and Tyreek, you know, obviously been a little bit distracted this week as well with the um, house fire situation. So I am a little bit concerned about Miami's wide receivers heading in to Sunday night. All right. Well, looking at the bills, what do you think their offense is going to need to do to be able to move the ball? Well, the Bills offense has been 
really effective on the ground this season. They're third in EPA per rush, but I think they're going to be shut down in that department as the Dolphins have the league's best run defense according to our metrics. So I think that they're going to lean on Josh Allen. He's targeting tight ends, the eighth most in the NFL, and Miami's defense is 26 in success rate allowed to tight ends. All right, well, we've been raving about this Miami defense for a while now, but how are they going to be able to hold up with all these injuries? Yeah, I think the bottom might have fallen out. and We, we certainly have been uh, profitable betting Dolphins unders in this second half of the season because we just think that that defense has been so strong and the offense may be a little bit overrated, you know, dealing with uh, injuries on the offensive line and, and two receiver. But now the bottom might have fallen out of this defense. So starting cornerback, Zayvon Howard, likely out with a foot injury, and he is allowing 1.5 yards per target less than backup Eli Apple. And I, I think we saw Lamar Jackson picking on Apple all afternoon last week, and I expect Josh Allen to do the same thing with those deep routes to Gabe Davis. And, you know, Bradley Chubb also out for Miami's defense. That makes both starting edge rushers out because they were already without Jalen Phillips and Buffalo's offensive line has been pretty solid. They are conceded a league low 10 sacks this year. So I think that Josh Allen is going to have protection. Uh, he's going to have one side of the field completely open. Obviously, Jalen Ramsey will be shutting down the other side of the field. But, mm-hmm. you know, Joe Brady can scheme up routes to the side that Eli Apple is on. So our model favors the Bills by uh, 0.6 with a predicted total of 45 Point four, So a little bit of a lean to the Dolphins, and it certainly looks like there's a, some value on the under as well. All right. I like it. Well, this is going to be a fun game to watch for this Week 18 matchup, but let's shift it over. We've got our primetime prop, and last week you gave out Sam Laporta over 50 and a half receiving yards, which he, which he cleared with ease. Who do you have lined up for us this week? This week I've got James Cook under 63 and a half rushing yards. So the Dolphins do not give up explosive runs. And I just don't think he's going to give enough carries to get over this prop the hard way with volume. Buffalo's offense just has too many advantages through the air with Miami's depleted pass rush and the loss of Xavier Howard at cornerback for them not to press it with Josh Allen. I I, I think Joe Brady is going to rely on the passing game. We saw him tailor um, an offense you know, ground game focused when when the defense was weak in that department in that game against the Cowboys. I think we're going to see the opposite in this game, and they're going to go to the passing game. And also considering the magnitude of this game, I think Josh Allen is likely to get more carries than he's averaging on the season, which will further cut into James Cook workload. So I'll take James Cook under 63 and a half rushing yards. I like it. Well, I think that'll do it for our week 18 podcast. I'm sad this is the last week of the regular season, but nothing beats the NFL playoffs. Yeah, and we'll have a full recap of the regular season on next week's podcast, and I look forward to coming back to previewing that wild card round. Me as well. Well, if you're looking for more content, head over to drpopsports.com where you can check out some of the college football national championship stuff, and we also have the college basketball model firing away there. So go ahead, leave us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. We'll be back next Friday to talk NFL playoffs.